Hello everyone, Mr. Willis here. Today we are going to learn the process of making a paper crane. Now, what you're going to need to make this paper crane is just a piece of paper. An eight and a half by 11 piece of paper would be perfect. It can be a notebook piece of paper. It can be a piece of printer paper. Anything that you can fold will work just fine. We're going to go through the steps of how to make this step by step so that you know how to do this at home. And we're going to use this as the base for our next sculpture. So good luck, have fun, and let's make some origami. Now to make a paper crane, you need a square piece of paper. Oftentimes you won't have a square piece of paper, you'll have just a eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So in order to turn this into a square piece of paper, you can just take the top corner and fold it down like this to the far corner and creasing those edges. One of the things that you're really going to want to do when you're making anything out of origami is crease the edges like crazy, really make those nice crisp folds. Now what you want to do is you want to take that extra paper that's at the end and fold it down so that it overlaps with the rest of the paper. This is extra paper that we're going to remove. So everything that's in that triangle fold that you made is going to be your square. And then now we're folding this down over that triangle so that we can take this off. So I'm going to double fold this, increase it really well, go in both directions so that I can open up this paper and then I can just tear this extra paper off. I'm gonna tear just right along the crease. If I have a little bit of extra paper that doesn't tear off quite as well, I'll just go up and take that off. These edges are going to be hidden for the most part, so if it's not a perfect tear, that's okay. If you have a pair of scissors, that would work fine too. But now that we have our perfect square of paper, we have one fold going one direction. So I'm going to make another triangle fold going the opposite direction. So then creating a crease that's going through this paper the other way so that when I open this paper up, I should have an X going through this paper just like this. And now I want to crease the paper um, going in a different direction. So I'm gonna flip the paper over and I'm gonna fold it in half doing a rectangle fold. So I'm, instead of folding it from one corner to the other, I'm folding it from one side to the other. And I'm going to crease it really well. Just make sure that you flip the paper over so that the folds that you're making this time are going in the, in the opposite direction. Once I've made both of those folds, I can open it back up, and now I should have an X running through my paper and a plus running through the paper. And so I have these folds running in opposite directions. Because I folded them opposite, they should be able to cause the paper to collapse in on itself like this. And I should be left with a square shape with a line running from one corner to the other, just like this. You'll notice that one side the paper is open and one side the paper is closed. You want the open part on the bottom. And so I'm gonna lay this down and with the open part, all the loose pieces of paper being on the bottom, I'm gonna fold the edge of one side of this diamond shape in towards the middle and line it up with that middle crease just like this. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna take that edge, I'm gonna fold it in so it lines up with that middle crease. And what it's gonna to start to look like is it's going to start to look like a kite on one side. And once I have both of those folds, that are folded in to line up with the crease. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the exact same types of folds on the other side. I'm folding that edge of that diamond shape in 
to the middle and line the edge up with that middle crease. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Once I have both of those folds made, it looks like a kite. Now, there is one fold I need to make at the top, that triangle that we have at the top. I just wanna fold this down over the top. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I need that crease in order to make a different fold. So I'm actually going to just crease this in both directions to make a nice crease right there. Crease it really well. And then fold it back up. Now it kind of can bend in both directions and I have that nice crease made at the base of that triangle. Now I'm going to open up one side of my kite and I'm going to open up where the paper is loose and start to lift it up. And you notice when I lift it up, the sides of the paper want to just naturally kind of fold in. So I'm going to actually let them do that. I'm going to reverse the crease on the edge there so that those folds fold in and it gives me a really tall triangle or more of a diamond shape, I suppose. It gives me a really tall diamond shape. And now I can flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to open up my kite. I'm going to lift the paper up on the bottom. And as I lift it up, it's going to want to fold in on the sides. Those those pieces of paper are going to want to reverse in. And so I'm going to let them do that. I'm going to reverse that fold on the side, lay that paper down, make sure it's laying nice and flat so that I have this tall, skinny diamond shape. Now, if you look at it, I have a tall, skinny diamond shape, but on the bottom it's open. It's like it has two skinny legs on the bottom. And so I'm going to take the two skinny legs, leave those on the bottom, and I'm going to fold the edge of that diamond into the middle crease, just like I did before, except now it's going to make those legs that we have really skinny. So make sure you have that open space on the bottom, those legs on the bottom, and you're folding the edge of the diamond in towards the middle crease, just like we did before. And once I make those creases, I can then flip it over. And I'm going to make those same folds on the other side, making those legs really skinny. There we go. Now I have a diamond that just gets skinnier at the bottom. I still have the legs on the bottom. And now what I want you to look at is you should be able to open up the side of your diamond, just like that. You can open up the, the sides. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the side so that we open up the leg on one side so that it's flat. And then we're going to lift up that leg and fold it at the highest point it will fold. And as we fold it and lift it up, the crease of that leg is going to want to reverse. And so we want to do that. We're going to reverse the fold of the leg. Because if you look at it, it is folded in one direction, but as we lift it up, it's gonna fold another direction. So it's going to turn from a valley fold into a mountain fold, just like that. And so we're going to just fold it up and then we're gonna pinch the side closed again. And it's gonna create this pointy side that's pointing up. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna open up the side, making the leg flat. We're gonna fold it as high as it will fold. And as we do that, we're gonna then reverse the fold of the leg so that it turns from a valley fold right there to a mountain fold. So that the crease is folding down instead of up. I'm going to crease this really well. I'm gonna make sure it's lining up really well and it's not crooked or anything like that. And then once I fold it up, I'm going to put it at the angle I want and then I'm gonna pinch that closed so that it's pointing at the angle. 
And now it should look like kind of like a crown or something where we have those two pointy edges pointing up. Now those two pointy edges on either side, one side's going to be the head, the other side is going to be the tail of our crane. And so I'm gonna take one side, I'm gonna choose one side, either side is fine. I'm going to bend the top of it down to make the head. I'm basically bending it down and I'm again reversing that fold where the head goes so that that fold turns from a mountain fold back into a valley fold. And then I can just bend the wings down. I'm going to fold them down and, and crease them as low as they will crease so that they're pointing straight down. I'm going to adjust this in a second, but as you can see, the wings are pointing down. And if I want to, I can just bend them back up, kind of pinch them so that they're facing up. But oftentimes what I'll do is I will curl them. And so I'm going to put my finger on the bottom and my thumb on top and just kind of run my finger up the top as I'm holding onto it with my thumb on top. And that will curl the wing and that will give it just kind of a nice little uh, piece of movement. It doesn't You don't necessarily have to do this, but it's a nice little touch to give it um, a nice feel. Now, the last step of this is if you look on the middle, the body part, it's flat. But you can see that there are some folds in there where it looks like it might be able to open up a little bit. So we're going to fill that with air. If you look on the bottom there, there's a little tiny hole on the bottom where you can actually blow air into it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the wings, I'm gonna pull them apart. As I'm pulling them apart, I'm gonna blow air really hard in, just like this. And that's going to open up that cavity and fill that with air so that it fills the body up and makes it a full body, not a collapsed piece of paper. So we're filling that with air, and as we blow into it, you're pulling it apart so that it allows that air to fill up and fills that cavity of the body. And then once you have that, you have your finished paper crane. It should be very close to this. And now you can start working on your next paper crane. Great job. We'll see you guys later.